going on guys? This is Kazi and this is probably the most exciting video of 2021 on this channel. It is the ultimate crash course for beginners in DaVinci Resolve. This is specifically for colorists and full disclosure, it is going to be an accelerated course. We're going to blaze through stuff here and just check out what we're going to be covering in this video. This tutorial assumes that you know nothing about DaVinci Resolve. So we're gonna start off by setting up a database all the way to delivering the final video to your client. Now, for those that wanna take their color grading game to the next level, I have a super exciting announcement. From now until May 12th, I have a special offer on my masterclass. And for those that are not familiar, let's check out what's included. By signing up for the masterclass, you get access to 211 plus on-demand lessons, 100 gigs worth of professionally shot practice footage, exclusive Facebook community, weekly coaching videos, discounts on Film Convert and DaVinci Resolve Studio, and up to $1,000 cash prize for the FCM Challenge winner. Sign up now, link is available up top in the description, offer ends soon. And you know something interesting that I just noticed that 57.2% of you are not subscribed to my channel. So come on guys, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and let's roll the intro. All right, so before we begin, just know that this is an accelerated course. I wanna get you from A to Z as fast as possible by making the most amount of sense, okay? First, when you open DaVinci Resolve, it looks like this. When you click on this little guy, anytime you see this little guy in Resolve, that just means that there's a menu behind it, okay? You won't see these databases. You will only see the local database. So what I need you to do is click on New Database, and then click on browse and then select your scratch drive, which is not your operating system drive. And that's just because you want to protect yourself. If you leave everything on a local drive and something happens to your operating system, you will lose all your projects, all your work. So once you've selected a new drive, then in here you can just type in DaVinci Resolve 17 database and then hit create. Resolve will create a new database and link this orange outline to the new database and you will be ready to go. So once that happens, you can hide that menu. And then in here, we can right click and say save as. Let's just call it DaVinci Resolve Film. And then now we can just double click on the project. Now we're inside DaVinci Resolve. Usually you'll be inside the media page. It will look like this. Let's just jump into our preferences and see what's going on here. Media storage is where all your gallery stills and cache files are gonna be saved. So you wanna make sure that you pick the fastest drive and preferably different drive than your scratch drive, okay? So then you can really divvy up and not have one drive do all the work. Under your memory and GPU, I usually leave these to auto. I feel like Resolve knows best. Video and audio input output. If you're using Decklink or Ultra Studio or Aja or whatever video card you're using, you're gonna go ahead and select that here, okay? Then if you hover over to your control panel, I'm using the DaVinci Resolve Advanced Panel, so that's what I have selected. By default, it will be set to none. So if you're using Tangent or any other uh, panel, you can go ahead and choose that here. General, I usually leave it as is. Under User Preferences, I leave this as is. Under our Project Save and Load, Make sure that you have these two checked on, live save and project backups. They're two different things, okay? Live save meaning it's saving all the time. But if your project gets corrupt, everything is gone. But if you have project backups, you can always go back and you know bring the project that was proper before it got corrupted. Also, a pro tip, do not save your project backups on the same drive. You wanna select a completely different drive, so God forbid if something happens to your drive, you have a backup uh, where you can just bring that back and everything is back to normal. I leave these as is. Um, I don't make any changes here and that's about it. So let's go ahead and hit save and we are ready to go. Now let's check out our project settings down here. So in our project settings for the master settings, you wanna select your timeline resolution, but you wanna uh, leave your timeline frame rate as is because as soon as we bring in our first clip, it will get adjusted automatically. Unless you know your frame rate, then you can select it here. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that to default. And then my video monitoring, you can uh, leave it at default, but if you have a 4K monitor, obviously you can go in here and select the proper settings and everything should be good to go. But usually if you leave it to default, um, you're totally fine. This I don't change, ProRes 422 HQ for my optimized media is perfectly fine. Working folder, I don't change because this is referring back to what we selected as our media storage. Image scaling, I don't mess with that. Color management, we're gonna leave it uh, to unmanaged, which is gonna be the DaVinci YRGB. Um, we can also select the RCM resolve color managed, but in this video, I'm not gonna be showing you that, so you can leave it as is. Down here in our lookup tables, uh, go ahead for the 3D lookup interpolation, change that to tetrahedral. I think this is how you pronounce it. It's uh, gonna be a better quality uh, 3D LUTs so, um, by selecting this. And then for broadcast safe, I checked this on just to be on the safe side. Otherwise, uh, leave everything as is in the general options, capture and playback, all of that can stay um, as is. Hit save, we are ready to go. Media page is divided into three different sections. So everything here is on your computer, but let's just go ahead and select the file we're gonna be bringing in. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that file, which is right there. So it's a single file and it opens up in our canvas on the right hand side. And uh, down here we can see the metadata. So we see the Kodak, which is ProRes 444, 24 frames, 4K file, 12 bit, all that good stuff. Uh, three different clips from three different cameras. And I did that on purpose to show you how to properly manage that inside Resolve and how easy it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this and drag and drop into my project. And as soon as I do that, it comes into my project, my frame rates get adjusted, everything is good to go. Now we can just right click here and say, create new timeline using selected clips. Let's just call it DaVinci Resolve Film. And now here's our timeline. Your timeline will always have a miniature timeline icon right there. This is how you will know that um, it's not a clip, it's a timeline. If I double click on it, it opens me up in the edit page. I'm not necessarily gonna take you through the overview of the edit page, but I will show you a really cool technique in here. Go under timeline and then click on detect scene cuts. This can only be activated in the edit page, okay? Now Resolve is smart enough to recognize different shots. So it went ahead and spliced everything nicely, but it's not smart enough to know which camera was which. So now we need to know that. Luckily, our editor gave us the camera spec sheet so we have all that information. We know that this is from Red Raven. This one is from Canon C200. This one is from Ari Alexa Mini. So. Now that we have all this information, we are in our color page where the magic happens. And the color page is broken down into a couple of different sections, okay? So everything up top I'm gonna explain, everything at the bottom is gonna make much more sense when we actually get in there and start working. So on your left-hand side, you have your gallery and your LUTs. LUTs, you can just hover over and preview your LUTs, how everything looks, and if you double-click on it, you can just select that LUT and just go from there. Okay, under your gallery, you can bring in your references. So here I have like tons of these references from different movies. And if I wanna create a similar look, I can pop these open and then use that as my reference. Or what I can do is I can do this, right? I can go here, right click and say grab still. So this is my reference image before I started manipulating my image. Okay, I can do the same thing here. So I can just go right here, right click, grab still. I can do that again here, right click, grab still. So now. All of that is preserved, okay? Um, I'm gonna click that to get more uh, real estate. And um, on this side, we see our timeline, which is down here. So we can navigate through that way, or we can just turn that off. And then here's all our clips right here. If you turn this on and off, you can see all your clips in this area. Usually, once I know what I'm doing, I will just turn these off to get more real estate so like I can really clearly see what is happening on my screen, okay? So this is where all our nodes are gonna be. This is our node tree right here. So this section, usually you will always leave on, obviously, because this is where you're gonna be creating your looks. Open effects is where all our effects are. So color, space, transform, film, grain, glow, all that cool stuff is gonna live right here. And then these are all our tools, um, all our parameters, all the changes that we're gonna make. 
And uh, one thing that I'm gonna do before we go in and start grading is uh, right click on our screen and say show scopes. So you have a bunch of different options. You have a one up, two up, four up. And for a four up, I usually leave it like this. So I have parade here, waveform, vector scope, histogram. And in the vector scope, you can click on these guys right here and go ahead and turn on show skin tone indicator. That's really cool because you can just really easily see if your skin tones are right on the money or if they're off, then you can easily make those adjustments. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna do a two up so you guys can easily see what's happening on my screen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave parades there and then choose vector scope here. So that should do the trick with the looks that we're gonna be creating. So before we jump in and start grading our shots, what I'm gonna do is make sure that everything is properly converted to Rec. 709. So right now it's in log, we can see that everything is sitting in the middle, that's what tells you that, hey, this is not converted yet, it is still in the log world. So since we know that this is shot on red and we have all the information that we need, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on Open Effects, Color Space Transform, drop that on here, and in here, I wanna put in the information that my editor provided me. So input color space, he had said that it was rec uh, or red color four. So I'm gonna choose red color four. And in the input gamma, he said that it was red log film. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose red log film. And as soon as I do that, it opens my image up and it converts it to rec 709 beautifully. Okay, so this one is good to go. Now I'm gonna go on this shot right here. I'm gonna drop this on. This one is shot on Canon C200 in C log two. So I'm gonna hit C and go to Canon Cine Gamut. And then here, I'm gonna do a Canon C Log 2. As soon as I do that, it gets converted beautifully. Looks great. I'm moving on to the next shot. This one, let's drop this guy on. And uh, this, this is shot on Ari Alexa. So I'm gonna do Ari Alexa and then Ari Log C and boom, it's converted to Rec. 709. And you can see that right there. So now that all our images are converted, we are ready to go. Make some magic. Okay, again, I'm gonna buy some real estate, so I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, so for this particular shot, my inspiration is Tim Burton's Sweeney Todd, so I'm gonna go for that kind of desolate feel. Also think of the Netflix's show Dark. So I wanna pull a lot of the colors out, but I wanna leave tons of color in my jacket. That's what I wanna create, okay? So I'm gonna leave my CSD up here, and let's just call it CSD. And uh, you know, if you guys are wondering how did I label that so easily, under keyboard customization, you can click in the search and type in label. And under label, you can click on nodes label and then hit the plus button and call it whatever. On my end, I selected tab as my uh, short key. So as soon as I hit that, it lets me label my nodes. You can select whatever you like. I'm gonna go ahead, create a new node, and then I'm gonna bring that down here. And I'm gonna create a um, couple of more nodes. And then in here, I'm gonna create a layer node here. And let's create a few more nodes. This one is gonna be a bit more involved than the rest of the shots because I wanna have a bit more fun here. So this one is gonna be called HDR palette. Here, we're gonna call this one our primaries. This one is going to be my background. And then this one is going to be my jacket. And then down here, I'm gonna call this my log. And this one is gonna be my color warper. Um, or you know what? This one is gonna be my mid-tone detail. And then this one is gonna be my color warper. And uh, that, as of now, looks good. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with contrast because right now it's just like really washed out. So I'm gonna give it tons of contrast, uh, something like that. Now that opened up my image quite a bit. It looks really nice. So I'm gonna leave that there. And now what I wanna do is uh, add a little bit of warmth, just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna go under my temperature and just add a little bit of warmth, not too much. Then I'm gonna take my tint and take some of the magenta out. So I'm gonna leave it somewhere around here. That looks kinda nice. And that is uh, a good starting point. What do I wanna do? Do I wanna add a little bit more color? I think let's let's do that. So my focus right now is on her jacket. So I'm gonna pop a lot of color and then kinda of pull it back, maybe somewhere around here. So right around 60-ish, looks nice. That's good. 
Now in my jacket, what I want to do is I want to go under my qualifier, just hover over her jacket, go here, and then open my key up to like really select uh, her entire jacket. And then I'm going to take my saturation and like pull it back. So I really get to select her jacket and then Luma qualifier again, just drag it back to select all of it. And then let's see. Okay. And then uh, let's go under saturation, open that up, luminance, open that up. There you go. Now the full jacket is selected and all I can do is uh, try to make sure that I'm not really selecting anything else and uh, reduce my choices. So I'll pull this closer, modify it a little bit. I'm going to go under my denoise and just get to around 10-ish. Okay. I'm going to go under my blur and I'm going to add a little bit of blur. And now we are pretty good with our selection here. So what does that mean? Layer mixer basically means that, hey, do not mess with what I selected here, but change everything else up top. Now, if you want to learn more about every single node in DaVinci Resolve or mastering the DaVinci Resolve node tree, then all of that is included in my masterclass. Link is up top. So here, what I want to do is I'm going to go under my sat versus sat and uh, I'm going to take my saturation and I'm going to start pulling this down. And like, look at this. This is what's creating that Tim Burton effect that I wanted to go for. Okay, and it's not doing anything with my jacket. It's just leaving it as is. Now what I can do is grab it from here and bring some of that saturation back and maybe leave it somewhere around here. So this creates a really, really interesting, cool effect. And uh, now what I wanna do is, as of now, this looks okay. So I'm gonna leave that there. In my log wheel, I'm gonna go right here and the trick here is to take your highlights and just crank it up to like 26, 27-ish. And a lot is happening here. But that's okay. Just stick with me. I'm going to go under my high range and my focus is right on her jacket. I want to make sure when my high range starts selecting her jacket, that's where I want to be. Something like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and reset my highlight. And what I'm going to do is now start raising it again. Just to kind of give some pop to my image on the top end. So something like that. Okay. So that looks really, really nice. It does a pretty nice job. Now our background is almost like blown out. So we need to control that. I'm going to go under my HDR palette and I'm going to take my highlights and I'm going to start bringing that down. And as soon as I do that, look at what's happening to my background. It's leaving everything else as is and it's just bringing my highlights down. And then I can do the same thing with my light and I will bring it down a little bit, but not too much because that is affecting more than what I wanna affect. So did a really nice job. At that point, I wanna go under my midtone and in my midtone detail, I really want to crank that because again, I wanna give it that grungy feel. So I'm gonna take it somewhere around 40-ish and it really pops my entire image out. And then under Color Warper, I'm going to select 12 by 12. So there's a bit more information. And then uh, what I want to do is I want to just grab this and kind of kill it. So like really make it desolate. So like, look at that before and after I took so much more life out of it. And that looks really, really nice. I mean, look at where we started to where we ended up. And um, what else can we do? So this is already looking really, really nice. We can create somewhat of a vignette. Um, but before I do the vignette, I want to do this. I want to add glow. So I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to go into my open effects. Glow, drop in the glow. And I'm going to be using it in a very stylized way. Okay, so I'm going to set to soft light. I'm going to start bringing this back. And... I'm gonna go under my global blend and I'm gonna kill this. I'm gonna really go back so it's not that extreme. And then I'm gonna take my threshold and uh, keep being a bit more aggressive with it. And what I wanna do here is this. Hopefully it's not gonna get too complicated. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, hey, take the 
key from my jacket, send it through into that glow, and now go under my key information and invert it. So do not select or affect my jacket at all. Affect everything else in the glow parameters, okay? And now we can actually get pretty aggressive. So I can do this, something like that, and then I can really start affecting that. So look how much more pop we added in our shot just by doing that. Once again, we can go back into our HDR palette and pull some of that information down. So I'm going to do something like that. And then if I do on and off, like you see, it does a really, really nice job. So we created a really, really moody scene because if I park somewhere around here and we take all of this, kill it. So we started with our CST. This is what the Rec 709 was. And then we did our primaries, like added some pop, isolated our jacket. And then this is where the look creation started happening. And then this just really gave it a nice pop. And then we controlled our highlights by the HDR palette and then grunged up our image using the midtone. And then I think this does a lot, like the color warper really brought everything to life. And then glow just adds that extra three dimensional layer to our image. And, uh, we can do a couple of other things. We can add grain in on a no tree level um, on our clips, or we can do something better. I can grab all these clips, right click and say, add them into a group. And then inside a group, I can go here on the post clip level and I can say, hey, add grain, film grain here. So as soon as I drop a film grain here and let's just do something extreme like this kind of grain, it will still be hard to see on, um, YouTube, but if I really punch in, hopefully you guys will be able to see it, but maybe not, to be honest with you. So if I do before, see right here, and then I do after, before, after. So you can see it a little bit, right? Now, the beautiful thing about dropping a grain here is that it's applied to all three clips. So with color grading, shaving off a minute here and minute there goes a long way, okay? So this is where we are. I mean, it's a very clean looking image and we can see that our highlights or our sky is really neutral. Like look at where all my colors are sitting compared to when we started where the blue channel was up top. So I think it's a pretty cool look um, for what we were going for. So we can just leave that as is and now move on to our next shot. Now, a quick shout out to my brother, Filippo Signotti for providing this epic footage. Check out his Instagram page and give him a follow. Let's get back to the video. Now, these shots are not going to be that involved. I want to just keep them pretty simple. So what do we see here? We see that it's way too bright than what it was intended to be. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my primaries. I'm going to take my offset and I'm going to start bringing it down. So I bring my offset down to something like this, leave it somewhere around here and just look at in one move, we were able to get so much information back. Now I'm going to go under my contrast and just start adding some contrast there, like really push it. And just look at that couple of steps and what we were able to create. And it holds up. It looks beautiful. So let's uh, park it somewhere around here. And now I'm going to create another node. Let's just name them, right? So CSD primaries. And then this could be our HSL. HSL is uh, our hue, saturation, and luminance curves. So in here, what we can do is just, let's just grab yellow and let's pull it down a little bit to give it a film look, right? So like, look at that. It just really creates this nice film effect. And uh, we have to be a little careful because I don't like what it does here. I like what it does up there. I don't like what it does down here. Um, so. Maybe let's do this. Let's leave that as is for now. Um, I'm going to go back in my primaries and let's try to bring it down a little bit more. So I'm going to go under my offset and I'm going to bring it down. Let's uh, leave it maybe somewhere around here. And now what I want to do is I want to go under my HSL, create another node and this one, let's call it glow. And let's drop on our glow effect and you'll see 
what we'll be able to do with the glow effect here. It's, it's kind of mind blowing. So I can go ahead and open my image up like that. And now we can just reduce the overall saturation. So I can go in our HSL curve and I can just like dial that back and look how much of a film-like effect it creates. And it's even uh, spread out all the way across so it doesn't really jump out. So just look at that, right? Let's scale everything, did a proper conversion. Then in our primaries, majority of the work was done. HSL just desaturated the image a little bit because after you add glow, it just adds a lot of uh, character to the image. And um, this helped kind of tone it down, just bring it down a notch. Let's move on to the next shot. And this one came from my other bro, Christoph. Definitely check out his page. He does a lot of work for ArtGrid and overall just creates banging content. So give him a follow. And now let's get back to the video. What we can do is uh, again, so this is our CST. We can put that up here. And then in our primaries, let's just balance it out. So I'm gonna go under my color temperature and I'm gonna cool it off a little bit. And then I'm gonna take some of the I'm just gonna add a little bit of magenta. And if I go into my skin tones and turn on skin indicator, I can see that, you know, before I had too much yellow in my skin tones and now they're sitting properly. And uh, all I can do here is again just give it a little bit of contrast, right? And then let's just um, see if we want to raise it up a little bit. So I'm going to take my gain and just like raise it up a little bit. Take my gamma, raise it up a little bit. And you know what I really want to do is create a cool look. So I'm going to create a new node and then this is going to be my look. And interesting. And then uh, this is going to be my look. And here what I want to do is have fun. So I'm going to take my lift and I'm going to pull it down quite a bit like this. And then I'm gonna take my gamma and go in the opposite direction. And then over to warm it up a little bit, my focus is on her skin, okay? I'm gonna take my lift again and I'm gonna just add a little bit of more teal. And then I'm gonna take my gamma, add a little bit of warmth, take my gain, add a little bit of warmth. And this is the kind of thing that we got going on here, which looks kind of cool. Now I'm going to go under my log wheels and I'm going to just even out my black points a little bit, not too much. So I'm going to lift up my shadows just a tiny bit. And then that kind of does it, right? So we created a really cool look. If I do before and after, we were able to create that look just in here. So let's say I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to create another node. And once again, let's do a little bit of glow action here too and see how it handles it. I'm going to drop that on. I'm going to change that to soft light. I'm going to move that back to like really open up my image. And uh, go under brightness and like raise it up. And what I want to do is I don't want it to actually feel like too glowy. So I'm going to control that here. And uh, what I really want to do is I want to go back here and now control the colors because I feel like there's way too much red in the midtones. So I'm going to go under my gamma. And I'm just going to kind of pull it down. And same thing with my gain. I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow right there. I want to make sure that my skin is really close to that indicator though. So if I do before and after, like look at the difference that we're making and it's a really cool look. Um, again, I'm doing it really fast, showing you all kinds of different ways to create these cool looks. Um, obviously, you can take these skills and then mix and match and create your own. But if I were to kill all of this, CST was, you know, we did a proper Rex 9 conversion. Then I did my primary just to kind of balance it out just a tiny bit, didn't really push it too much. And then this is where the fun began, where I just created a little bit of a look. And then Glow really added this cool vibe to the entire shot. So now let's say we're done with our grades. Everything looks good. What we can do is this. That's the beauty of the still gallery. One, we can obviously say match reference wipe frame, and then look at where we started to where we ended up. So that's really cool. Another thing is that we can just right click here and now save our final grade. 
So the beautiful thing about that is that you can name it whatever you like. And now you have a graded version available in the form of that still. So say by mistake, if you delete this or if you want to audition something else, you can go ahead and do that. You can always just right click and say apply grade and it will bring back all your nodes the way you had them and bring that grade back. And same thing happens here. You can do that if we were to right click and grab that still, we can bring that back and now we have our graded shots available um, throughout our project. If we want these available throughout our database, so then whichever project we're working on, we always have these looks available. What you would do is you would grab these three and you would just drag and drop them into your Power Grade. Now, Power Grade is available database wide. So it doesn't matter which project you're in, you can just go to Power Grade and you can access these. Stills are only available within the project. Now that all that is set up, um, let's just say that I like the layout of how my color page is set up here, right? So I can do this, make kind of changes, leave my scopes here, two up, get rid of my clips here. And like I go, you know what? This is kind of cool. I don't want to do it again. I like how this is set up. I want to save that. So you can save that preset under workspaces, go under layouts, and then you can just do save layout as preset. And you can just go ahead and save this. Then you don't have to make any changes how I have these, a uh, bunch of these like presets saved up. So I can just go in here, select Kazi edit, grading, whatever. And then that's that. Now let's move on to our deliver page. Let's just say that we're ready to deliver this. Um, this is gonna go on YouTube. Um, if that's what's happening, then you have these cool ready-made presets that you can use, which is really cool. Uh, you can just click here. What is it? A 1080p, you know, 2060 project. What is it? You can click on it and then usually it does a pretty good job. But one thing that I would tell you is this. Let's say we're exporting an H.264. It's going to go on the web. Um, under your quality, I would say go to restrict to. And for 1080p files, 40,000 is a good rate to select. Uh, the quality is going to be really, really good. If you're doing anything that is 4K, um, or around that, then set this up to 80,000. You will get a really, really good quality that way. And um, again, once you make these certain changes, whatever it is that you're changing here, once you have everything set up, you can click on these three dots and say save as new preset, and then you will have that preset available right here. So I don't know, let's just say we save this and we call it YouTube HD, and we say OK. So now see, uh, we have that preset here available at all times. So even if I go select something else, I can always just go back there and click on that one quick button and it just brings back all my settings. I'm ready to go and I can just hit export and that's that. So there you have it, guys. Let's check out these looks in full screen. Now, I know for some, this was probably information overload. And for that reason, I took my time creating my masterclass, which deep dives into a bunch of these topics. Again, the link is up here. You can check it out. It's also in the description. It's also in the comment section below. I really encourage everybody that eventually will join my masterclass to do it now because there's a special offer and it only lasts up until May 12th. So definitely check that out. And on that note, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, and I will see you guys in the next video.